Yo, 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 what is going on, COD and ROK, Familia, it is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and in today's video, I want to talk about the dark side of jumping, on how there are times where jumping, if you want to say is the majority of time, or more often than not, is negatively impacting a game's community, and we're going to be touching and explaining why that is, because to me, even if everyone or anyone can make a jump project, it doesn't mean that you should or that you can. So today... We're going to touch on a number of things, starting with what goes into running a jump project, different types of jump projects, how do the projects impact their respective games, why is the jumper scene this lawless, unregulated, wild, wild west wasteland. We will look at some jumper ads between Cod and Rock and review. We will maybe do a little bit of a deeperish dive on the largest jump projects now in Rock and Cod, maybe one to two. And then I will provide some solutions and round things out with giving you my final thoughts. As always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you throw us up because it helps out a lot. So number one, what goes into jumping? Well, there's a lot that goes into jumping, but to keep things as pimpedly simple as possible is you are basically a manager. You, if you've ever been an alliance lead or a member of management, or if you've been a kingdom manager where you're looking at more than just a single alliance, you probably have a semblance of a closer idea on the amount of time, commitment, effort, responsibility, and accountability goes into doing that type of role and then being able to transfer that over to something like project managing or being a jump project founder or lead. And the idea being is that you are responsible for everyone in your jump project. You are, and that's anything from pre-planning how the kingdom is going to go, for what your expectations are going to be, what are your goals, what are your standards. You're going to do things like setting up meetings. You're going to have to pick leads, pick officers, if you have to do any player distribution, if you're going to be setting policies for how are you going to conduct diplomacy when you're in the kingdom, how are you going to do zone one. Everything from how will zone two plan? Who's going to go to zone two? Who's going to go to zone three? How are you going to diplo with other kingdoms once you get to KVK? How are you going to handle player drop off? How are you going to increase activity? How are you going to do merges? How are you going to be there as a human relations for people that have questions? Or maybe if they come to you compared to going to their leads or come to you compared to go to their officers, what if they just come to you first for everything? How are you going to problem solve any challenges that may occur? Because again, you're responsible for the project as a whole. So being able to essentially know how to do pretty much everything right, is great. Even if you are not the SME, the subject matter expert in every single area, knowing at a foundational level how to do everything uh, in a diverse, uh, because you have a diverse palette of what you understand and you have that knowledge and experience is to me kind of a bare minimum. And so, uh, and again, I say that in, in most cases. And from here, even though I'm not naming everything, there's a lot that goes into it. And so when you think about this idea of you know running a jump project, it's not just something you do on a whim. It's something you do with a realistic level of expectations going into, going into running a project because you, at least at a face value level, one, have enough time to do it, and two, you have enough knowledge and enough experience to start doing it depending on the level that you want to start it at, which segues into our next one on different types of projects. Now, there are a number of different types, but to simplify these, you can do anything from running a single alliance jump, a two alliance jump, a three, four, five, six plus alliance jump. You can do things where maybe you want your project to just be filled with high and mid spenders and maybe Due to those reasons, you only have one or two alliances that you are planning to have. Maybe you want to have four, five, or six alliances, and you want to push all of them into one starting zone so you can have one zone all to yourself. Maybe you want to have six alliances or more, and you're going to spread that out between zones. Maybe you want to go in and you want to focus on a balanced approach. Maybe you want to go in and just run a mega alliance approach where it's just you're just going to funnel and recruit you know, basically the top 200 people and put them all into one alliance. There's a number of ways that you can go about running a project. And it all starts with what kind of kingdom do you want to build? And then making sure that you are transparently setting those expectations and communicating those to everyone in the project. So that way it's crystal clear for everyone. And then the next here is how do projects impact the game? Well, this is where we start getting into a little bit more of the dark side. And we're going to really touch on this. Uh, in a bit. But the way that projects impact the game is, let's say, for example, you're running a project 
and things just don't go well. Uh, we're not going to say like succeed or fail, but just for simple terms, if the project ends up, you know, going a, a different direction, or let's say the players there are having a negative experience uh, for any number of reasons, this can cause people to either one, lower their activity, which only hurts the project and the kingdom more. Two, they stop their activity and decide on what they're going to do, which hurts even more. Three, they stop their activity and they restart, therefore utterly leaving the kingdom, which again hurts a bit more. Four, they stop their activity and they quit the game. Five, they lower their, uh, sorry, five, they stop spending, but maybe they're still active. Six, they stop spending and lower their activity. Seven, they stop spending, lower their activity more and decide to restart or quit. And these are things that can have negative impacts. Why? Because one, it costs the game money. Or sorry, not it doesn't cost them, it loses them money. Two, it loses player activity and can potentially cause for negative things like feedback and reviews to be sent. Three, it can limit the amount of recommendations the game gets for new people to come in. And four, it could also damage other players by having chain-like effects or reactions that ripple throughout the project, which also could ripple throughout the kingdom, affecting other people that are in the kingdom slash said project. And this is not something that is a good thing <laughs> by chance. It can be if things go well. However, I would argue in my experience that it's more likely that projects do not live up to the expectations. Doesn't mean that they incredibly succeeded or they, you know, flat out failed, but just more that they didn't reach the expectations or, and or exceed them uh, as was maybe set as an expectation going in. And because of that, more often than not, when unrealistic expectations are being set, it can cause a higher chance for negative feelings and negative reactions to elicit from the project based on how it goes. Then let's get into the next one here, which is why is the jumper scene lawless? Why is it unregulated? Why is it this wild, wild west? Again, the reason here is because no one has to prove credentials. Nobody has to prove knowledge. Nobody has to prove experience for the most part. You don't have to really prove any of this. There's no meeting that you go to. There's no class hours that you have to go and take in order to get a fancy sticker or a piece of paper that says, hey, you completed this. Nothing. You know, just like becoming a doctor where you have to spend years in school. I imagine take tests, exams, have to do uh, real life uh uh, I want to say walkthroughs, if you will, playthroughs. And even if you look at something like becoming a real estate agent, right, you have to study and take a test for that, go to a testing center, etc. depending on how it works, I would imagine your country, nuances here. And so there's nothing like that in cut and in rock. There's nothing like that in the jumping community where you have to go and get this stamp of approval that says, yeah, I'm a competent leader or I know how to run a project, right? There's nothing like that. And because you can have anything from a teenager running your project up to a 70 year old person running your project to uh, someone to anyone from anyone across the world to someone who just started playing the game to someone who's played another game but has never played this game and decided they want to i mean it, 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 you're, it's like playing roulette you just have no idea what you're going to get and due to this goes into one of the things i said earlier which is that listen man even if anyone can run a project doesn't mean that they should and that's one of the challenges, and we've seen that, I can't tell you how many times I've seen that, right? And I'm sure some of you that have been in projects probably realize that when you finally, depending on how long you kept jumping and how long you were willing to keep jumping, if you came across a project that you thought, man, this project is really good. However many times it took you to get there, maybe you found one, maybe you still haven't found one and you're still jumping right now. Those are things that I can tell you is one of the hardest and most difficult pills to swallow. Uh, and how do you kind of get around that? How do you avoid the lawlessness? Well, one of the best things that you can do as a player is to make sure that you're joining multiple projects and you are looking at common denominators, you're looking at trends between them, you're looking at the pros and cons, what are the strengths, what are the opportunities or weaknesses that they have, and trying to decide for yourself on what project you want to go with. So applying a level of due diligence and joining many projects 
and going through and looking what they're about, maybe looking at how their management responds to people, how are they set up, you know, those are things that you can do and that are in your control to at least increase your odds on having a great day-to-day -day playing experience. Next, let's look at some jumper ad reviews. And so here, we are going to take a look at, uh, let's look at some COD ones, and then we'll go and we'll look at some rock ones. So here, we got a couple projects. We'll just start with some here. So we have, <clears throat> let's see, we got, I don't, even, I don't even know what that one is. Let's go to, let's go to another one here. Uh, uh, that's not really a lot. Okay, here we go. So let's do Gemini Family. Here's one they posted. Uh, international Project, Member Count 150, uh, starting date 515 or 520, confirmed high mid spenders, possibility of whales. Automatic red flag would never join any project that talks about having confirmed or guaranteed spenders. And that's because the fact of the matter, you have no way to guarantee that. I don't care if you show me a bank statement for how much money they have. I don't care if you show me that they've spent on another character in another kingdom. That does not guarantee with a sh without a shadow of a doubt that they are going to spend on this character in this project in this kingdom that you eventually land in. Until the only guarantee you have is once you actually see people spending. Whether that's in your first or starting kingdom or in your final kingdom as a project. So any project I ever see that says things like confirmed spenders or anything of that sort, automatic red flag, don't join. Experienced R5 and R4 that will have all frames in zone one. Again, do not deal in absolutes. Red flag already. Good tactics for war, good activity. Okay, that's that's you know that's that's general. That's not really like a hard commit, so to speak, on something that you know you're going to get. That's more of like the expectation that maybe you're setting, even though I probably would put that in a different part, like what sets us apart instead of information. Weekly officer meetings and enhanced coordination. Okay, that's cool. Again, weekly officer, like that's something that's, I think, a lot uh, more easily attainable. Well organized and strategic planned Discord server. Okay. Uh, multilingual and friendly community. Okay. Uh, friendly community is more of like what you'll probably see once you get there. Guides for everyone to see, help, uh, or leadership if needed. Okay, that's nice. So you have guides, something that people, when they get there, they can see and they can get, get something from. Uh, no farmers, only warriors. Okay. That's more of, again, the expectation on the types of players we're looking for. Depending on if you agree with that or not, it's still not saying that... Uh, it, it, it's not like a hard it's it is kind of a hard commit but it's not in the traditional sense because they're telling you the type of people that they want so hopefully they, that's what they get that's really kind of more on not really on them it's more of like on the pool of people that join uh, our journey three main alliances academy soul members rewards for every behemoths everyone behemoths past and events uh create a group of warriors that will fight anything okay now we're kind of getting into a little bit more of like maybe unrealistic-ish expectations shared frames loyal members who are kind free to play pay to win uh new one experience okay let's look at another one 466 final kingdom nothing there here's an international project let's look at this one do i have to go up high? okay here so this project yin yang project of the year okay that's bold cotton r4 roll open join to play now krakens and whales confirmed do you guys see what I'm saying? You guys see what I'm saying here? Just unrealistic expectations that are being set. 400 plus start date. Our offer, a leadership made from past servers. We, will, uh, we won't fold after season one. Once again, why, why are we over committing to things that we can't guarantee? We are tired of blank promises. We only say what is realistic. Really? <laughs> Uh, you uh, well, a competitive but fun environment. You won't be bored here. Truly united and drama-free server. Again, drama-free. Keep in mind, you have no way of knowing if it's going to be drama-free because you don't know everyone that's going to join your project nor anyone that's going to join the kingdom. So you're just going to absolutely blanketly guarantee that no one's going to stir any drama from inside your project or externally? Again, hard committing to things that don't make any sense, that are unrealistic. No civil war will be tolerated. Uh, community events, two alliances, winning season two until T1. Again, guaranteeing you're going to win something when you haven't even got there yet. Solid. Solid approach. Uh, whales and Krakens, killing me, kind, non-toxic, loyal people. I mean, I think that's... Okay, and this is under we need. So, okay. Uh, and then just talking about some of those positions. Okay, 
Let's look at some... Let me see if we could find one more here. And then we'll go to... Okay, that's not really like... Eh, it's just not really formatted, so to speak. All right, so let's look at some COD... Some rock projects now. And we're going to go to the jumper community for this. And we will then go to the jump around section. So let's look at a couple here. Uh, this one is by Legion Family. Okay, member count 50 plus. Start date. Our spots available about us. Information. Two Kraken confirmed. Two Whale confirmed. You see the problems already. Auto red flag would not join. Experience leadership. Uh, United Kingdom. KVK focused. Again, be a little bit more specific here, right? How are you going to differentiate? <coughs> excuse me. How are you going to differentiate yourself if most of the time we're just seeing kind of copy paste templates from any, from what most people are doing? Uh, what we're looking for, okay, uh, why us? Unique jump, organized plans, active community. Okay, I mean, I guess they'll see that when they get there. Uh, and then goal that they have, okay. Let's go to the next one here. So this one uh, only has nine. Here's one. Trinity Days has 129 members. Um, Jumper and Sleeper Project, all right. Active individuals, war leads, fighters, free-to-play, pay-to-play individuals. Uh, experienced, we have reliable spenders. How do you have reliable spenders? You don't. You have no way to guarantee that. Even if it pans out or not, again, we can't predict the future. So automatic red flag for me, just wouldn't join. Uh, winning all KVKs and pushing forward together. Oh, God, it's getting so unrealistic. We have to move on. The Pioneers, December 20th. Uh, let me see. Future jumping sleeper loopers. Uh, starting, okay, uh, rally garrisons, everything from free-to-play Krakens, our fourth spot for Phil, R5s for sub-alliances, uh, loyal members, families, okay, what's our vision, three main alliances, support, wake, uh, make a council of nine people, two councils, okay, we aim to build B2C, one alliance, uh, last temple, okay, so notice how this ad to me is probably the best one so far, because there's no unrealistic expectations or absolute guarantees that they're making, good on you. Uh, next one. I don't know what this one is. This is Tanoki. Uh, Jumper Project. Experienced, dedicated leaders. Reliable spenders. Three Krakens. Ten whales confirmed. Oh, it's getting ridiculous. Let's move on. Uh, someone posted something for New Age. Here's Glorious. What is this? Glorious Jump. Okay. Member count. Uh, start date. R4s. Uh, whales. Okay. Saying that they have whales because you're putting that information. You're KVK focused. Okay, great. But the fact that you've already said you've had whales. Automatic turnoff. Just wouldn't join. Uh, creating four main, dominating the kingdom and KVK that, that assumes that you're going to win. Again, do not set unrealistic expectations. You don't know if you're going to win because you don't know, one, how your first kingdom is going to go before you even get to the KVK. Uh, let me see, Night Jumpers, <clears throat> uh, led by open-minded leaders, uh, building fighter community. Okay, uh, organized job details, strong and stable, uh, rising star kingdom, KVK. Oh, gosh, goals. Okay, I mean... I just, I just don't know if we should even put that our goal is to win a KVK because you're just already setting the bar so high. And the fact that every project does it, some of it to me is just like, dude, let's just have a little bit of a fresher approach on things. Uh, Crimson Mortar. Okay, how about this one? KVK, we'll maybe do one or two more here. Uh, KVK goals, veteran leadership, organized Discord server, two main alliances, two whales confirmed. Again, already turned off because you have no way to confirm that people are going to spend. Uh, active, loyal, free-to-play, low spenders, whales, and krakens that you're, that you're looking for. Uh, why not just add this on one line? Conquering your own kingdom and successfully unifying it. Okay. Uh, focus on KVK win. Okay. At least this says focus, and it doesn't just say KVK win as though it's a blanket statement. Like, oh yeah, there's nothing but that. Otherwise, we're just useless. So thank you, at least for having a little bit of some different expectations. Okay. Let's look at some projects now. So let's go into COD. We'll look at a project here. Uh, let me see. This one's called, I think, Drug Dealers. Shocking. So we have Cartel Announcement. Let's look at this one. So we have some Alliance info, nothing. Project info. We have some things, but not really, I would say, crystal clear. Because, again, keep in mind, when people are joining your project, you should at least have information listed on what are the project's expectations, what are the goals for your project when you're going into a kingdom, what are your main points, not of contention, but what are your main focal points for that kingdom? How are you going to run SLEs? How are you going to do zone distribution? Who's going to go into zone three? What's your policy on fighting? How are you going to grow the kingdom? How many alliances do you want there to be active? I mean, any number of things that are there, right? What's your project goals? What is the project's focus once you land? 
uh, information on uh, recruitment, information on guides. Like nothing is there. You know, you have a big project here, 659 people, even though I'm sure a few less than that is going to be members. But where's the information on how you're going to actually run the kingdom? And just for anyone that's curious, right, who might ask, well, boss, do you have all the roles enabled? We do. The only ones we don't are just some music and some vibe and VC channels. Okay, let's go to a different one, the Goon Squad. Uh, this one, I think, has almost 300 people. I think it's high 200s here. And if we go up and we're looking at announcements, uh, okay, I mean, a, a little simple. I, I would almost like some of the announcements to be a little bit more geared uh, towards, you know, kind of consistently providing information. Because if you haven't started or let's say you're not ready yet, a lot of your information should, in my view, be pretty consistent. Why? Because you need to be able to adhere to new people that are joining. And if people are going back and historically are reading archived mails that are on a channel, and maybe they only wait to read the most recent mails. Sometimes you should have consistent areas, even if you have different areas, whether that's at the end or beginning of an announcement or kind of in the middle and you're just kind of updating things throughout. You should be having those things because you're trying to reach as many people as you can, especially when you haven't started yet. Now, if you're ready and you're just waiting for the start date to come up, then yeah, you may approach the way that you do mails a little bit differently, but it still is nice to have some consistency so you can kind of point to areas that you need. So let's take a look. Our vision. Okay, so it's one king alliance, three main alliances. Okay, but what about everything else in the kingdom? Like that's just, that's not enough. That's covered. Uh, leadership roster. Okay, this is all right for one alliance where you have who's who, contact information, a little bit of a follow-up. I don't really know if we necessarily need all of this unless you're going to provide kind of a hierarchy on how the project as a whole is going to work. About us, all right, so you have some information here, and I do like that this is formatted decently well, where you can get information. However, this is on one alliance. What if you have more alliances, which is the point? You have one king and one main. So maybe when we think about about us, we could have about us for each alliance, or if you're going to do this, try to maybe include everyone's posts in a single post possibly but if you're going to do it in this way i probably would have individual channels for each of the alliances just so it's a little bit more clear if you're going to be making the post kind of this big then if we look at uh we did announcements recruitment message okay uh where to recruit okay so you got some information here leadership applications okay but what about the kingdom goals how are you going to set things up that's not here right that's just one thing out of a number of things that probably should be here okay Let's look at rock jumpers. So let's go to a project, The New Age, which has 723 people, but 700 plus. So let's look at theirs. Okay, uh, project presentation. Okay, this is weird. Nothing's here. How about jumper plan? Nothing's there. How about sleeper plan? Oh, well, nothing's there. Okay, how about leadership teams? Okay, so this is all right. This is kind of an example of here. You can list multiple teams. You have contacts for each of the people in those particular roles. Not bad. Now, do I think we could simplify this and make it so we don't have to scroll as much? Yeah, just put it all in one post and just don't have the line breaks be as wide. Uh, how about presentation of leaders? Okay, so some information. Now, it's not as formatted and as organized as one of the other ones that we saw, so that's an opportunity here, but it's nice that they at least have some information. Uh, how about project news? Okay, nothing really that we have there. Doesn't seem like there's really anything else. Invitation voice chats. We can also go to channel roles, right, just to see that we have majority of the things selected. We do, so we're not really missing out on anything per se. If we go to announcements for information, well, uh, we can have the channels will be ready soon. Again, going into prep, channels should be ready before you start recruiting. Red flag to me. I just wouldn't join, respectfully. A glorious family server, or at least I wouldn't join until I wouldn't join until it's ready. Let's be clear there. Not saying not join at all, but I wouldn't join until it's ready. <laughs> um, and then we get to this one. Oh, I see. This is one I think I had applied for, but oh gosh, I mean, it's probably already a turnoff for me. I, you know, again, if you have to take too many steps to verify just to get basic jumper project information, I just wouldn't join <laughs> respectfully until things are changed. Um, here, here's another project, Celestials. They have 328 people here. Uh, announcements. I mean, again, it's, it's been up for a while. And the announcements just feel very bland. They feel like we just didn't really put any effort into them. And uh, a, a number of the announcements and all the other projects we looked at felt the exact same way. Okay, so let's look at, do they have information posted here? Okay, alliance information, project info, nothing here in project info, about us, which is, okay, I'm not really too sure there. Ads posted, other community, here's recruitment ads, uh, servers to recruit, but nothing's posted there. Again, just notice how 
a number of things are missing, right? And if this is the standard that jumper projects are still at, even when I was doing them <clears throat> years ago, it is kind of sad that we haven't at least reached a baseline level of minimum uh, quality control between when we know we're ready to start recruiting versus when we should hold off and finish things to get them to a state at which we would consider ready. Next, let's talk about, and actually if I can, let me show you just an example on projects, a project that I'm doing in COD along with maybe an example if I can find one from Rock. So here's an example of a project that I'm doing, right? And notice how it's very simple. It's not overly ambitious. We don't have, you know, and again, you want to have your emojis and your reactions and things like that on certain channels. I'm somewhat okay with that. But just as long as we have a base level minimum amount of info. So we have like a start here channel, which is like an index or directory. It tells you all the channels, a bit of information on each. I even have a timeline channel, which tells you what stage or phase are we in of the project. And then what are the upcoming phases as well? And where are we? And then how far are we along with where we are? We also have an announcement channel. Notice how my announcements, again, even though at one point in time, they weren't always as clean as they are like this, even if my format was more or less intact, even when I was doing earlier projects years ago, notice how, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward, right? Format is nice. We don't have too much text in any area, at least when we are able to keep things short. And it's really straight into the point. We have a sign-off channel where people can kind of react based on timelines once we end up starting. And we open that up. Uh, based on how we're going to do player distribution and you can do things in a different types of ways you can do it based on wide gaps for time ranges you can do it closer in our blocks you can do it based on language a number of things cod positions a basic information on expectations we have for leaders and officers we have a video reference guide and then we also have an application how about goals for the actual kingdom like what do we want to do there what are we trying to accomplish what are we trying to set up how are we going to do uh, MGEs, SLEs, how, you know, what, how are we going into KVKs? What does Zone 1 distribution look like? What does Kingdom conduct look like? Alliances and merging, our Kingdom missions and values, PvP in the Kingdom, balancing. Again, even though there's not everything here that's included, uh, I'm, there's probably a couple of things I could still add, there's at least a baseline. How about COD project plans? What, is, what are we going to be doing as, as a project, and what are the expectations that members should have when we're going in? to the first kingdom, to final kingdom, etc. right? There's at least something here. How about resources? Why do we need to have tons of channels? Why can't we have one channel that just effortlessly includes everything, right? Or one or two posts on a channel that effortlessly include everything. Why does it have to be so busy? Uh, I even have like a resume channel here that's pretty clear where I have my resume that I put out and I'm very transparent about that. How many project leaders out there do you know that are humble and transparent in telling you all the projects they've been in, and also detailing out how some of those projects went, what were maybe some takeaways, and what kind of opportunities or improvements are they looking to apply to the project this time around? Because I can tell you right now, I don't know if I've ever seen, at least for the projects I have been witness to and been privy to, I don't think I've ever seen anyone do anything like this. I mean, I even give you video reference guides, and again, that's a little bit extra, not everyone may do that, but it's just to hammer the point home, is if you go and you look at my situations, I have five projects here that I link you to on situations, sorry, six, um, out of the nine I've ran, where I link you to projects that I've ran without having to say ran so many times, where you can at least get a glimpse on how did the project, like how did things kind of end or conclude with me being there? Um, and then what were some of the takeaways and what were some of the lessons learned? Because for me, I think that's really important is that if you're going to do a project, sometimes things aren't always as black and white. It's not always, oh, this failed or this succeeded. The context matters, in my opinion, and the way that we kind of establish on what constitutes a successful or an unsuccessful project as well. Because I bet if you go and ask a number of people, that you will get varied different answers on what people define as a successful or unsuccessful project. Now, to me, to kind of keep things simple here, I will say, man, I keep saying that a lot, don't I? I keep things simple here. <laughs> but uh, Self-reflection. For me, what I believe would constitute a successful project is, one, is the project uh, able to stay at its core, for the most part, intact uh, throughout the first season, and were you able to stay going into the second season, right? Where one, your project was able to meet hopefully its core goals and, 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 and policies and reaches that it meant to in season one. Was the core group of management able to stay mostly intact and last throughout season one? 
to where you're at least going into season two, right? That to me, I think is kind of a generalized way that I would define if a project is successful or not. Now, if you want to define on how long a project lasted, now you're kind of getting into a different realm. But that to me, I think at a baseline is how I view it. Okay, now let's get into what do I think are some solutions? What are some things that projects can do better? Well, one, I think just being more honest and truthful in our ads. Two, and this is probably going to be directed at a number of people that have ran projects or are currently running projects, is that there's just not enough, I think, knowledge and experience and maturity or maturity in people that have ran, in people that are, are running projects and have ran projects where most of them just don't have competent leadership. They don't have competent people in place based on where they are currently to really be able to appropriately manage and lead a project. You have to understand that you are responsible and accountable for every player that joins your project with good intentions, let's be clear there, and wants to be there for the right reasons. And because of this, having, like we've talked about and mentioned before, a minimum level of knowledge and experience in as many fields and areas as possible will help you to have more of a realistic approach when you are doing a project. And I'll give you a great example. When I was playing in my main kingdom of 1196, when I eventually made a character to restart and join this jump project that went to 1196, it was one of the best introductions that I ever could have had in a kingdom builder. This was with Legends Gaming, uh, people like uh, Tuki, Deeds, Azza, people that I knew there. Um, and obviously there was a lot of other people too as well, right? And so for me, it was such a great experience because I started out as a member. I eventually worked my way just to becoming a contributing member. And it wasn't at first. I probably played there for, I don't know, 9, 12 months, give or take, before I really started feeling comfortable. And that was just because of the fact that I was just okay and content with being a member. But eventually something clicked and I wanted to start learning more. I wanted to start uh, educating myself. I wanted to start gaining more knowledge to a point where I started helping people out and contributing. I eventually was able to work my way up. Uh, to where I was offered to be an officer. Later on, I was offered to be a lead. But even before that, I wanted just to be a contributing. I just wanted to help out in some way I could. And oftentimes, you can actually help out a lot more not being an officer and not being a leader than you can when you are a, an officer and a leader. And that's because you don't have a set amount of tasks and things that you have to uh, complete assignments every day. When you remember, it's just free time outside of playing. So I can go and participate in things like departments for uh, recruitment, uh, data departments, uh, human, uh, sorry, uh, human affairs uh, departments, right? Where you're kind of going and helping people out with any kind of day-to-day -day challenges or problems or problem solving out there uh, with the community. Uh, uh, internal affairs, excuse me. Uh, you can do things like community events and outreach. So do we want to help organize fun events within the kingdom? Uh, Right? Do we want uh, to do things like a war department? Right? Do we need to go out there and research tactics for KVK wars, for who are meta, who are meta commanders, uh, best pairings? Do we need to go and look at things like Ark of Osiris and see what people are running in those? Um, and start kind of putting together any trends or common denominators that we're noticing. Do we need to put maybe mails? Maybe we're part of the mail department. And I had opportunities to help write mails and sculpt mails for certain events or certain things that we knew we would send out often. I had an opportunity to really engage in a number of departments, not all, but a number of them. And that eventually allowed for me to work my way up to kind of become the right hand or a lieutenant, if you will, to the kings and queens where I was a go-to person. And the kingdom leadership would at times come to me like they would other people. And I was able to be included into that group because of the effort, the dedication and the commitment and the work that I put in to get to that point. And eventually... After I played for around two years or so, I thought, man, let me go run a jump project because I feel like I've, I feel like I had accumulated enough. And then even then I went to go and join other projects just so I could see how they did things, look at their channels and what information they have and kind of, you know, pick and take away what I thought were good things and other things where I thought were maybe some opportunities that maybe I would change and do things differently. And then you modify it, you make it your own. And 
this I think feels almost kind of like a lost art to or a lost way of process to a number of people or maybe just some people don't know that they can do these things and it can really gra drastically improve their project overall. And so, yeah, man, that's why all in all, my final thoughts is, is that it sucks that the jumping scene, the community as a whole, in probably any kingdom builder, I would believe this applies to, is just an, unre an unregula uh, unregulated lawless wasteland that you have less likely of a chance finding a successful pro uh, finding a project that has a high chance high percentage chance of success and you have a greater chance of, of finding a project that has a low percentage chance of success and the fact that it's been that way for years is ridiculously sad and baffling to me it's not surprising but it sucks to see and so i will leave you with me wanting to know from you are you someone who's been jumping for a while? How have you seen the scene develop from maybe when you started to where it is now? Do you see some of the things that I see? Do you think I'm out of pocket and maybe I'm not seeing everything that there is out there? How was your experience in a recent project? Did you notice any of the things that I've pointed out or different things? We'd love to hear your story and your thoughts. Let us know in the comments down below. As always, until next time, I'll catch you later.